MacGuffin, but Visions. Visions, season two. Take two of my greatest interests, two of my greatest loves. You got Star Wars and you got anime. You put them together and you got Star Wars anime. You literally have visions. And I am such a fan of the first season of Visions. It really was different uh, from what I was expecting. And I'm sorry, but to me, it's all canon. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know. Visions is actually not canon. But what I really like about Visions is just uh, the different art styles it takes. Now granted, some, not all of Visions, some of Visions was really excellent. So others, uh, well, the story was kind of like, okay, but something that I really f found interesting about was, it was just little adventures taking place within the Star Wars universe. Not canon, we don't have to worry uh, about uh, out, uh, sticking to the canon verse of Star Wars. No, we could actually just tell a complete interesting one-off story that uh, just kind of celebrates what Star Wars is at the same time. Celebrates the magnificent, the amazing art that comes out of Japan. I'm Japanese animation. I'm a huge fan of Japanese animation. I'm really into uh, Naruto, My Hero Academia, I used to be into I, uh, uh, Black Clover. I can't wait for the new season of that to come out, especially the movie on Netflix. And th there's so many anime that I, I really like. Steins Gate, another great anime. So, literally, we are taking the best studios of Japan, the best studios of Japan, and, give, and giving them a chance to tell their story within the Star Wars universe. And it is absolutely fantastic, interesting, and I have to say this, the animation blew me out of the water when it came to the first season. So, now we get to season two, and that's is going to be what this video. I have literally reviewed every single episode in season one, and I am going to review every single episode in season two as well, because I am that much of a Star Wars and anime fan. Let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? Well, that was dark. Okay, we are going to be reviewing episode eight, The Pit. There's a couple of dark jokes I could make there, but I won't go there. Um, <laughs> this, that was really, really dark, but you know what? I really, really liked it. It was a really interesting episode of Star Wars Visions. Something that, um, yeah, uh, something that I did not expect to come out of Star Wars. Don't get me wrong, now, Star Wars has always been kind of dark, I mean, come on. Uh, but... Yeah, this one, this one I was not expecting. So, uh, The Pit, what is this story about? First off, animation, great as always. Second off, even though there wasn't much music to it, the music was always nice. Um, the animation though, like legit, this is another animation that I would watch just an entire series of a Star Wars project with this animation. It looks so crystal clear good. I would really like to see some of these animations, some of these stories turn into like full on shows. Because seriously, some of the uh, these uh, Star Wars visions uh, uh, episodes can make just whole Oh, whole shows, the stories, the characters are so well written and so well put together that I would love to see more of them. Um, uh, will that ever be the case? I don't know. Maybe Star Wars Visions will never do that. Maybe Star Wars Visions will always just be these one-off uh, uh, episodes that uh, don't tie into anything, but don't have to, you know? I, like I said in the beginning of this video, like I always say in the... Uh, um, uh, intro to this video, you know, we don't have to tie it down to uh, uh, the canon lore of Star Wars. We can 
actually just tell a really interesting story. And let me tell you, these Japanese uh, um, uh, animation studios are doing just that, telling really interesting stories. And this one, oh boy, is it interesting. So, it starts out with uh, The Pit. It's about um, uh, these gr a group of people. The Empire has captured the, these group of people and, and uh, are making them dig for Chiron Crystals. And I thought we were going like a Holes feel, like if you've ever seen the movie Holes, I got that kind of feeling. Um, and I liked it at first, but then it, it definitely took a turn. So eventually, um, uh, time progresses, they build a city, and, and they have kept the people uh, working down, down there for years and years and years. And now it is just a giant pit. And one day the Empire says, you know what? They've gone to the bottom of it. They got to the bottom pit. We don't see any more kyber crystals anymore. Uh, so they free the people and they just leave. What happens to the people that uh, are down the hole? Do they do they send ships to come and uh, uh, bring them up and live in the city? Nope. They literally leave them down in the hole, in the dark, dark this pit. <laughs> Again, it's. It's really dark. Um, so the empire go goes on. On we have uh, uh, the city living their their lives, and then out outside the city, the the people of the city don't even know that uh, the pit exists apparently. And down in the pits, we meet we meet this guy named Crux. And you know what? I don't remember names very often, but Crux was such a good character that I really liked. I really wanted to see more of. That um, I I remembered his name, and uh, it, it's a shame that he dies <laughs> at the end of this. I was not expecting there to be a death scene at the end. Like, don't get me wrong, some of these uh, Star Wars episodes have definitely had, had some deaths in it, but it's always been like the bad guy. We don't see the hero guy, and uh, yeah, we we saw the heroes. We saw the hero folks die. So. He, uh, um, he, he's a young, strong, on kid, and uh, he's the only one with a chance who can actually crawl out of the pit. So that's what he decides to do. He decides that he's going to be the hero of, of the village. At the same time, there, there's this little girl. I I don't think they were brother and sister. I, I, I mean, it could have been. Uh, it, honestly, I just think the little girl was looking up to him because she... She doesn't know anything. She she might have just grown up living in the pits, and he he tell, uh, tells her uh, um, uh, about uh, the lights that there is a light deep inside of all of us, and all we have to do is follow the lights, and things will work out. Um, uh, and I liked Crux's whole speech to the kid. So Crux uh, climbs the wall the next day, gets out of the pit, and decides to go to the city and tell them, hey, we're here, we need help, come save us. That's the whole message. And of course the people, uh, the people down there are like, well, they're not going But he believes in the light. He believes that these people will actually come and help. So he goes there, he asks them for help, the Empire steps in, uh, the Empire catches him, and what do they do to him? Do they lock him in jail or something? No. They literally tell the people to go, uh, go back uh, act to uh, their business, and then they take him back to the pit and throw him over the side. <laughs> they throw him over the side, and I'm thinking, oh my god, um, what are they going to do? Is someone going to use the force or something? Is someone going to catch him or something? No, he... <laughs> well, you know what happens to him. Um, and, and then uh, the little girl, oh, girl that, that was the tough part, the little girl co comes out and he see, and she sees what happens to, to him. And I, I legit thought, I legit thought that they were going to go even darker with this and the Empire was going to just start blasting these people. Um, I'm very surprised that they can't do that, actually. Uh, I guess one death was dark enough, let's not kill a thousand of them. I guess my thought was darker than what the show actually was.
But um, yeah, the, the girl said, uh, uh, says, you know, uh, they'll come, they'll come if they, they see it in the light. So uh, she and everyone else starts chanting the lights, right? And that gets the people to come over and actually see what's going on. They see that that uh, um, these people are down a bit and that the Empire's not helping. So the people of the city decide, yes, let's actually help them while the Empire just steps aside. Um, really interesting episode. I was not expecting it to go that dark. But there's a lot of ways to look at this episode, and I can definitely say, uh, say this. Doesn't matter which way you look at this episode, this episode was brilliantly done, brilliantly made, and I enjoyed uh, the story. Um, and then at the end, the little girl, you, you know, he, he gives her, uh, him a little cr a crystal in the beginning of the uh, episode, and uh, she, uh, she, she takes out the crystal, and then the crystal turns blue. Um, signifying that she is actually more sensitive. That was great. But I, what I really liked about this episode was it wasn't a focus on force sensitive beings. It was obviously just a focus on the general uh, uh, audience of Star Wars, the general people of Star Wars, the uh, um, j just the pe uh, people that that uh, tried tried to do uh, do, uh, do something, and <laughs> the Empire really screwed over. The Empire really screwed them over, um, and I'm I'm really glad I'm glad that it, uh, it was the the people of the city uh, uh, that found the hope to actually stand up and go and help these people out. You know, showing that there is still light in the galaxy, um, even during the darkest times, even throughout the darkest pit of Star Wars. And yeah, uh, nine out of ten, fantastic episode. I'm very surprised I'm not giving this a 10 out of 10, because it was that good. I might give it a 10 out of 10 in the future. I might have to change my, my opinion on that. But um, let me know what you guys think of the pits down in the comments below. And I'm going to go watch the next episode. Episode 9 of Star Wars Visions. Oh my god, we're already close to the end of the show, guys. The end of Season 2. I'm going to be sad to see it go, but here we go, we're going to watch the, uh, uh, episode 9, and finally we'll rank these episodes in a different video afterwards. Without further ado, let's go. Bye! Subscribe to Dylan's Little Hobbies right now.